welcome to VeeamON 2023. VM Blog is here in Miami covering uh, this world-renowned event. And I have the pleasure of having Dave Russell, who is the Vice President of Enterprise Strategy with me. Welcome. Hey, good to see you. So uh, today on the keynote, um, there was a major focus on ransomware. Yeah. And I understand you guys just did a lot of surveys and uh, can you maybe tell me some sure. of the results from that? Yeah, so you know, if I kind of go, why did we do a survey? Um, some of the information we were looking for just wasn't available in the, out in the industry. So we did a, a, a industry-wide, meaning not just being customers, right? Being customers out of 1,200 organizations that actually got hit by ransomware, that's who we surveyed. And being customers represented about 7% of those. And it was global, worldwide, companies at large, small, various verticals. We asked backup admins, chief information security officers. And some of the interesting things that we saw, I mean, it's almost a, like, here's some bad news and here's some worse news. I mean, it just got worse and worse. And one of the reasons that we're really trying to promote it is really to raise awareness. I mean, regardless of what backup product you use, the challenge is, you know, all of us in the, in the industry, no matter what you're using for backup, if you think about the anatomy of a ransomware attack, the number of things that had to go wrong to get to that point, right? I mean, intrusion detection failed, and that's after your employees clicked on an email that you already probably told them, don't click on phishing emails, and right. just go down the list, right? A lot of things went wrong, and then you're now trying to recover. So if you kind of really look at the punchline, the bad actors are going after the backup repositories because they know that that's going to be your out, right? That's going right. to be the way that you try to avoid pain. Um, so what are some of the new features that have been added uh, as a result of the survey results? And maybe you can speak a little bit to those uh, survey results. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I mentioned they're going after the backup repository. 93% of the survey results of 1,200 organizations said the bad actors tried to attack my backup repository. That's crazy. It's a pretty high number. And you know, if I kind of decompose who gets attacked, everyone gets attacked. It doesn't matter what geography you're in, what vertical you're in. In some cases, they're targeted attacks, but usually it's a crime of opportunity. You know, we all like to think it won't happen to us it's really the odds don't favor you. And so the typical organization, it took them three weeks to recover on average. A lot of organizations, it took a lot longer. So what did we do? There's a number of things that we found. And interestingly, this didn't come from us. This came from chief information security officers and other security specialists and backup administrators saying the number one thing that they think they can do after all these other failures is to have good, clean backups. Right. So that's, again, I just like to stress that you know, the backup admins didn't say that, the CISO said that. Right. And so then we get down to, well, okay, how fast was it, how effective was it? If you do the math, on average, 55% of your data is going to be okay in production, and 45% of it was going to get corrupted or affected in some way, either encrypted or deleted. Then now, assuming that your backup repository didn't get compromised, you're going to start streaming the data back if you can. For a lot of organizations, actually over half that data, they actually had some kind of problem with where they couldn't get it back. You start to do the math, you've lost at least half or close to half of production. Right. You're losing at least a good portion of your backup that got affected, either because you had some problem with your backup system or your backup system got compromised. Per incident now, you're losing about 18% of your data. And if I marry some of the other statistics, that we've got half of us, 49%, are getting hit two or three times a year. And on average, two or three times, we're losing 18% of production, and we're not getting it back from our secondary copies every single time. And if you're taking you know, three to four weeks to try to recover yes. from it, that's, uh, you're going to be in recovery most of the, the year. You hit the punchline right. right there, you know, right? If this happens, you know, that frequently, every quarter we're in this mode. Right. So what are some of the things that you guys are looking forward to, to doing in the future with Veeam to make that even better? 
Yeah, so we've already had the ability now for about four years, when we go to recover data, we can actually ensure by running malware scans that we're not reinfecting day zero threats. Even longer than that ago, seven, eight years ago, we've had the ability to test our backups automatically to ensure that they truly are recoverable. One of the things that we announced and demonstrated on stage today in an upcoming release is inline detection Right. So that we can understand at the moment the data is passing through into us, if there's some anomaly that we should be aware of, it, it will be imperfect. I liken it to a kitchen alarm, you know, your smoke detector. Mm -hmm. You're probably willing to pay with a few chirps from that machine to tell you, yeah, I'm burning the spaghetti, right? But that's better than not being alerted that, hey, the house is on fire while I'm asleep. Right. So it's about detection. You know, we, at the end of the day, we're sensing smoke. We just want to offer the ability to do that in more locations and to be able to help you recover faster with confidence. So I heard a lot of buzz about cyber insurance, but in reality, what does that really cover and uh, are they covered? Yeah, so 77% of the people said they invoked cyber insurance. Even more said they had it, but they just chose not to actually activate it for fear of raising their premium. Right. So 77% th better than three out of four said they relied on it. But going forward, what we found is once they actually use their cyber insurance, some combination of their premiums went up, the cost of deductible went up, and the cost or what was covered declined. Only a few percentage points, literally a handful, said there was no change. So the challenge is that three quarters of us are using cyber insurance per attack which is happening oftentimes more than once a year, the reality is the applicability of that cyber insurance to offer financial remediation is actually decreasing. And some geographies actually, some of the cyber insurance almost completely disallows coverage for cyber, if you can believe that. Meaning you've right. got to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing was done improperly, almost to the point of where your likelihood to successfully file a claim is, is pretty much in question. And I found it pretty interesting also that people that actually did pay the ransom, it was not a guarantee that you're actually going to be able to recover. And I think you said it was one in four or maybe Yeah, one. so unfortunately, there was the majority of people that once they got attacked, they chose to pay the ransom to get the data back. And of those high percentage of people, which was almost 80%, 21% of them said, we paid the ransom and we couldn't get the data back. I mean, that's literally double whammy. Right. <laughs> Great. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, speak with VM Blog, and we look forward to the rest of the show. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And everyone out there, we've got about 15,000 that are viewing the episodes remotely here from VMON. Be sure to check it out.